You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Although Hidden Traps is not officially released until August 1st, you can pre-order your paperback or ebook copy now from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 
8687. Oh, let me tell you something. I am so sick of Washington and all its works, all them politicians down there and them congressmen and the congress. I'll bet you won't find none of them congressmen signing down their electric blankets tonight. Which if they did, their secretaries would get up and go home. We gotta do something. Absolutely. You know what we gotta do? Foga party. Foga! 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 you to kill every golfer on the course. Check me if I'm wrong, Sandy, but if I kill all the golfers, they're going to lock me up and throw away the key. Well, all right, all right, all right. It's Friday night, which means it's time for Robinson and Wright. We are live right now on KLRNradio.com, where we come at you every Friday night at 11 p.m. Eastern. I am one half of the crew, Mr. Big Robinson, joined by the other half of the crew, Mr. Dan Wright. And how are you this evening, sir? I'm doing okay. I'm glad that it's the weekend. It's been a, as usual for me, it's been a hell week. Um, you know, I found that it's funny when we play our opener, I play air drums every time. I love that song. I'm headbanging. I still love that song. So, I mean, so you're drumming and I'm <laughs> headbanging. So, you know, it works. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, and actually that was one of the reasons why I picked that song. I thought it, one, first of all, kind of went well with our graphics. Second of all, it's kind of one of my favorite songs. Um, actually, I used to run Hogan's, uh, well, for those of you who've never been to a gun range before, there is a part of a gun range usually reserved for professionals that work with firearms. It's basically called Hogan's Alley. Some of you have probably heard of it. You've seen video games about it. I used to have a habit of running a Hogan's Alley setup with that playing in my earbuds, just because it was fun. Nice. <laughs> But anyway, so enough about me talking former shop. So uh, lots of stuff going on in the news. Uh, everybody's having a cow over Trump Jr. possibly meeting with an attorney that was Russian and making a big deal about it. And I'm just kind of sitting over here going, I'm just going to kind of wait and see what actually comes of this because you guys have been wrong a hell of a lot more than you've been right lately. I'm just saying. This is the way I look at it. Whether right or whether wrong, however you want to look at it, this is a two-part statement right here. You're talking to somebody and your father's running for president and they may or may not have said, eh, we got dirt on the person running against your father. What do you do? Maybe you shouldn't have put yourself in that situation. Maybe you didn't know you were putting yourself in that situation. And maybe the other side's done the same damn thing. So what does it matter? That's where I stand on it. All right, so here's my take on it. Yes, the other side has done just as bad, if not worse. But, you know, that's 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 one of those things that we get mad at everybody for doing. Is Stop saying the other side did it first. But here's my thing. And, and this was the same take I, I had on it on last night's show on America Off the Rails. Show of hands. Your dad's running for president. You get a random email from an old friend who says, hey, I may or may not have dirt on the person that your dad may or may not be running for president against if he wins the nomination. What would you do? Because I know what I would have done. I would have went to the meeting. I'm not going to lie. Why wouldn't I have went to the meeting? Nobody was making a big deal about the Russians at that point. Hell, the Democrats four years ago were making fun of Romney for trying to make a big deal about the Russians. Now all of a sudden they're our enemies again? Wait, I thought they were our friends. Anybody remember Barack Obama and his little one-line wonder at the debate? And he's like, hey, Romney, the, the 1980s called them want their foreign policy back. Everybody ate that up like it was ice cream. Now all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, Russia's not our friend. What are you doing? Four years ago, you said the exact opposite. So I'm a little confused. 
We've been the ones that have been consistent. He didn't go there because he thought the Russians were our friends. He went there because somebody who happened to be a friend, a longtime friend of his, said, hey, I may or may not know somebody who has dirt against someone who may or may not be your dad's opponent at some point. He's like, cool, I'm in. Hmm. So knowing what I know now about how nuts okay. everybody went over the Russians, probably shouldn't have done that, but hey, you know. Here's what, and I won't say all, you know, I, I mean, I know, I've, I've got a liberal brother who's very involved in corporate dealings, but what a lot of liberals don't understand is that the Trump conglomerate is worldwide. They have friends in probably every country, at least every seriously domesticated country, westernized country in the world. They do. They have friends. So what? He talked to a friend. So what? A friend that said he may have dirt on the person his father is running against for president of the United States. What? That's not collusion. That's not collusion. It really isn't. It's not, it's not a guy working with a foreign power to overthrow a freaking election. It's not. Everybody needs to stop. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of Russia. I don't want to hear about Russia anymore. I want to hear about things getting fixed here in this country. I don't want to hear about Russia. We meddle, and Obama did it a lot. We meddle in other countries' elections. We do. Every country does. Every country that has anything in the way of an agenda meddles in other people's election, other countries' elections. That's the way it works. That's what happens. It's funny how... It only matters now. It only matters now. After eight years of Obama meddling in Israel's elections and whoever's elections, now it matters. Now it freaking matters. Really? Russia's been meddling in our elections since there was really the U.S. and really Russia. Yeah, and they, the U.S. has been meddling in Russia's elections since it was really the U.S. and really Russia. And everybody meddles in everybody's elections. And shut the hell up. I'm sick of it. I'm done with it. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I want to hear about how this country is getting fixed. That's what I want to hear about. I'm you know done the, with it. You know the interesting thing about Stop that? Stop with... Uh, no, nobody called Ted Kennedy a traitor in 1984. No, when he tried to get Reagan overthrown. Yeah, with the using the Russians, the, 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 the actual USSR, not the free state of Russia, the actual USSR. Right. But exactly. nobody, nobody called him a traitor. Exactly. Yeah. They, there wasn't enough made over him drowning a woman in his car as there is over Trump collusion with Russia. The man drowned a woman in his car and went on to be a lifelong senator. If I drowned a woman in my car, I'd still be in prison right now. I'm tired of it. I don't want to hear about Russia anymore. I want to hear about how things are going to get fixed here. I don't care about Russia. They've meddled in our elections forever and a day. We've meddled in their elections forever and a day. We've meddled, thanks Barack Obama, we've meddled in Israel's elections for the last eight years. I'm done with it. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Collusion, I, I, I hate that word. I'm done with that word. I want it over with. I want it. I want things to get fixed here. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about Russia. I won't say I don't care. 
I care about Russia. I care about North Korea. I care about all of this stuff going on, but I want things fixed here. I'm done hearing the word collusion. I don't care. All the collusion is there with Hillary and Obama and everybody else, but the media won't say anything about that. As long as it's anybody in the current administration even sending a freaking, you know, I don't know, sending a gift to a Russian, it's collusion. I'm sick of it. Want to talk about collusion? How about sending billions of dollars to freaking Iran? How's that for collusion? But 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 wait, that was their no. money. Wait, wait, wait. That was their money, remember? That was their money. That was yeah, that was their money. Yeah, that we froze. That was their was money. Coming. We should have given it back. That that was no, fro- they're that our was... enemy. Well, yeah, and it was—I mean, it was frozen because they've been—they were sponsoring state terror. So, yeah, there, there's a reason we cut off their money. You know, it's interesting that you bring up all the things that we're not talking about, like the fact that if it wasn't for all the drama and the distractions, you might actually know that the uh, the economy is actually on an uptick and has been now for quite some time. Um, and nobody's talking about it. According to a report I saw the other day, there have recently been five hundred thousand jobs created. Which is like the largest number in four plus years. But nobody's talking about it because we're too busy talking about Russia. Look, there have been plenty of things well, that yeah, Donald when Trump you, has... When you put, when you put a businessman in the White House, that's what he's going to do. I mean, and even whether he tried to or not, just, I mean, I'm not a Trump fan, but just electing the guy created jobs because of what he said. It did. It created jobs. I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of him. Either, I see but... it. I, but, but I see it. I mean, we're, work, well, you know, work has picked up for me. I mean, I literally had to kind of shelve my Wednesday show because I couldn't get home from work on time <laughs> to be ready for it. I just can't get home from work on time because we have that much work. All of a sudden, we have all this work. But then everybody say, well, that's just because of the tail end of Barack Obama. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's because people are now spending money because they feel like they can't. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, there are people that are still making the arguments of, well, right now we're still dealing with Barack Obama's economy, not really Trump's. No, not really, because let's not forget that Barack Obama didn't actually pass a budget before he left. So technically, while it's a continuation of a lot of the things that Obama was doing, because that's what Trump did just to put something on the table, the positive outlook doesn't have anything to do with Obama's policies. It has to do with the fact that Trump has talked about sweeping tax cuts, uh, sweeping tax reforms. Uh, repealing Obamacare, which is now becoming more of a rename and replace Obamacare, um, which I'm not really a fan of. I mean, I was honestly surprised that I saw this week that apparently Ted Cruz has kind of been swung the other way. Uh, Rand Paul is still holding out, which makes me a little happy. But at the same time, I'm really starting to wonder if this may not be something that we have to fix incrementally instead of trying to force it all through all at once. As much as I didn't want them to take this approach, I'm really starting to think it's going to be the only way we're going to get anything done. It's pr- it probably is. I mean, I don't like to see anybody cave, but they're trying to push something through so that they can all go on vacation. That's the way I look at it. I It needs to go away. It's not going to. And... I said it all during the election when the whole thing came up. Yeah, we need to get rid of Obamacare. It it can't happen. Once you put a government balloon into action, it doesn't go away. It just doesn't go away. You can tweak it. You can work it. 
it's there. Obamacare is there forever. Unless something drastic really happens next year or in 2020. I just, once it's instated, it's instated. It's there. That's the problem right now with government. You put it in, it's there. There's no repealing it. It will never get repealed. It may get semi-fixed here and a little fixed there. That's all that's going to happen to it. So a bit of a sidebar. It's going to be a constant, a constant, ever-changing thing now. Bit of a sidebar, but what happens if you take the word tweak and combine it with the word work? You get twerk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Now just picture McCain and, and McConnell twerking. <laughs> oh, okay. You just made it bad. I know. That's what I was going for. Oh, all right. So anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, big non-starter this week was the Russia thing, um, and I, I just, I really don't get any of this anymore, because here's the thing, and I, I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and it's kind of become a bit of an epiphany, because everybody that's screaming about either Trump or the Congress or everybody, we have nobody to blame for any of this but ourselves. We are the ones that have allowed this to happen. So those of you that are standing around screaming and yelling about how screwed up everything is, take a moment to look in a mirror because it's your fault that it's this way. Just like it's our fault that it's this way. That's why I started all of this almost a decade ago was because I was tired of sitting around feeling helpless and realizing that I really that, that there was really nothing I could do. So I'm trying to find ways to get people's attention and wake them up and make them understand if you really want things fixed, we have to be the ones to fix it. You can't rely on the government to fix it. That's why the government shouldn't be involved in your health care. You, they shouldn't be. The government has no business in your health care. The government has no business in pretty much every aspect of your life other than the few that the Constitution allows them to be in. And trust me, the Constitution allows them to be involved in about three things, not the four million things that they are currently intertwined in your life on on a daily basis. This is why those of us that are conservatives are sitting here going, look, guys, there's this nice set of documents that outlines everything that is supposed to protect you from idiots like this, and we're not using them anymore because we've bought into this BS that they know better what we need than we do, and that they're smarter than us when they're not. They're not. They're, they're truly not. Even Barack Obama, the supposed constitutional scholar, was a moron. Now, I'll, I'll let everybody reserve judgment on Trump and how much of a moron he either is or he is not. His public persona may, may, reminds me of Joe Pesci. And I've said that before. Sometimes when he really gets talking with the hand gestures and the New York accent, that's exactly who he reminds me of, is Joe Pesci. And I will let you decide if that's a good or a bad thing. But what I know is that the Founding Fathers had a very distinct vision for this country, and if they were alive today, they would be bitch-slapping every last one of us for letting things get to where they are right now. Absolutely. <clears throat> I mean... I look at a thing, I mean, literally, the government is getting almost to the point where the government is going to be telling us what our sexuality is. Well, you know, the, 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 the transgendered population is already trying to do that. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm, I'm literally being called an a-hole because I refuse to date a woman with a penis. Point of order, no woman has a penis. Well, wait, but no, they do, apparently. No. Apparently, no, they do. They don't. And apparently, they do. And I'm an a-hole because I don't want to date a woman with a penis. Well, apparently they're confused because there's no such thing as a woman with a penis. <laughs> I don't care how many aftermarket procedures you have to change the packaging on the outside. You can't change your chromosomes. So if you have the chromosomes... No, I'm a homophobe. No. I'm a homophobe, a transophobe, because I would rule that out. 
No, you're a guy who knows he doesn't like dick and doesn't like plastic vaginas. So no, that doesn't make you transphobic or homophobic. It just means that you know what you like and that ain't it. Transphobic or homophobic would be when you're beating the crap out of them and telling them to stay away from you and you don't care. Uh, it'd be, be, I mean, trans. if you want to talk about transphobic and homophobic, that that's Islamist. You know, they're the ones that throw them off roofs. All we're doing is saying, hey, you know what? Keep, right. that, keep that crap in your bedroom. And no, I don't care uh, how, how good you think you look with plastic tits and a, and a wig and some makeup. If you, you know, I'm not into that. Thank you very much. Hey, and you know, and there's, there's, you know, there's some out there. Yeah, you look great. I don't want to be with you. Hey, you've done a good job. You made yourself look like a woman. Good job. Great. Yeah. Don't want the penis. Thank you. Don't hold it against me that I don't. It's called science. It's called biology. I biologically do not want to be with a woman with a penis. Hold yeah. that against me if you want. But you're making yourself look stupid. So, but but here here's the here's the thing that I don't get, and this is something that's been driving me crazy ever since I th I saw this start happening because this has been happening now for months. Once the 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 argument about who can marry whom was settled, all of a sudden everything shifted. Now there's all these little fringe groups trying to come out. This happens to be one of them, and now they are making the argument that you have the ability to make a choice as to who you decide to sleep with, and if you make the wrong choice, then you're homophobic, you're bigot, you're whatever. I thought sexual preference right. wasn't a choice. Wasn't that the whole point of their argument was stop telling me that I can make a choice to be straight because I wasn't born straight. Well, I'm sorry. I wasn't born gay. I don't like penis. I'm sorry. I don't... Like, well, <laughs> the, the, the LGBTQ, they... LMNOP? It, oh, it, 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 I, 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 it's something I said today. I said, it all depends on the cause du jour. That's what it depends on. The cause du jour. Either homosexuality is a born trait or it's a chosen trait. But in their eyes, it's a born trait for one end of it, but it's a chosen trait for the other end of it. So if you if you see that hot chick walking down the street and you find out she's really not a hot chick and you don't go home with her, you're transphobic because you thought she was hot until you found out she had a dick. Really? No. Mm -hmm. I thought she was hot. And then when I found out she had a dick, I realized she was a guy. Okay. And I don't want to be with a guy, and I don't want a dick in my bedroom. Well, other than the you. end. So, let well, what was that? I said other than you. Just kidding. Well, yeah. But anyway, so let, let's look at this from another perspective. So, let's say that you order a salad, and you specifically tell them, I cannot have shellfish on my salad because I'm allergic to shellfish. So they bring you the salad, you take a couple bites, and you dig down a little bit, and suddenly they're shellfish. So you decide to send the salad back because you can't eat shellfish, one, because you're allergic, two, because you probably don't like them because you're allergic. Does that mean that you are basically being an ass because you're sending something back because you specifically, they know you didn't want this, and yet they tried to give it to you anyway? Is, is I mean, but we're still right back where we started from. Because now that they're saying this is a conscious choice, could we not flip this all right back around on them and say, hey, look, this goes back to our original argument. Because if this is a choice for us, then that also means it's a choice for you. So get your ass back in your bedroom where you belong and leave us the hell alone. Exactly. And, and you made a good point with the salad reference. Because 
I'm at the point now where I would have said, eh, I'm just not eating the rest of this salad because I know I'm going to get sick and I'm going to pay for it because what's going to happen if I send my food back? Some minimum wage dude who wants $15 an hour in the back is going to go, oh, he's sending his food back. I'm going to end up with worse than whatever I sent back. And that's how things are. And I know that's how things are. Probably because somebody's probably going to spit in it. Yeah, exactly. So now I don't get what I'm allergic to, but I'm going to do some dude's spit or freaking pubic hairs or something in my freaking food. So that's why I don't eat out. I rarely eat out. I I don't know. I, I'm just, this whole thing, this whole this is the thing that pissed me off the most this week was this whole this whole if you don't if you look at somebody and you like them and find out they have a penis and you don't comply you're transphobic. No, I'm not transphobic. I'm heterosexual. I am heterosexual. I don't like penis. Yeah, but to them, isn't that pretty much one of the same? I guess heterosexual is going to be a term that's a, a word that's just disavowed. It'll be hate. It'll be hate speech soon to say that you're heterosexual. On that note, folks, we've got to take a break. And uh, Dan, you know, one other little point of order on that salad. You'd probably come back with a salad going, wait, I didn't order ranch dressing. What's that? And I'll just play. We'll be right back here in about four minutes. Stay tuned. Here's George Foreman with Invent Health. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at Invent Help. Call Invent Help today for free information. Invent Help has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. Invent Help can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call Invent Help today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put Invent Help in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk 
or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Although Hidden Traps is not officially released until August 1st, you can pre-order your paperback or ebook copy now from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. Folks, we are back. We are live. Say it with me. Every time you hear Liberty Healthshare, think cha-ching. No, I'm just playing. Anyway, so we are back. We are live. This is Robinson and Wright live on Friday night, and we are about halfway through the show. Uh, we've been a bit all over the place. We've been talking about the fact that apparently we are two cranky old white men who don't like dick, and apparently that makes us homophobic, transphobic, whatever you want to call us. Call me whatever name you want. I know what I like, and I really don't give a crap. Just saying. Yeah. Don't like dick. Just saying. I mean, there's, there's not call really... Call me old-fashioned. Call me old-fashioned. Whatever. I mean, but see, here's the thing. This is the part that I don't get, because in order for me to be transphobic, homophobic, whatever they want to call it, that would mean that I would be telling everybody else, no, you really shouldn't date that because the top may look female, but the bottom's all dude. I don't give a damn. If you are happy because, you know, from the top up, she looks like a chick, and from the waist down, she's hung like a horse, I don't care. If that's what floats your boat, as long as I ain't got to see your boat being floated, I really don't give a damn. That does not make me transphobic. It does not make me homophobic. It just means that I know what I like, and personally, I don't want... I mean, I, I'm, there's no other way for me to put it, so forgive me again for being crass, but I don't like dick. And I don't like plastic vaginas. So, no, I don't even care if it's an aftermarket, subtract the dick from me. I don't want, I, I'm not going to go there because that's not what I'm into. I like women, actual women, 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 not Barbie dolls. No. You. You're exactly right. I mean, if, if, if I had a friend that was like, yeah, I'm totally into that, I'd be like, cool. Oh, you're totally into that. But apparently I'm transphobic because I'm not. It's ridiculous. I mean, I've been watching this on social media, and it's like, really? So, so if I have a certain sexual preference, I'm transphobic, and I'm homophobic, and I'm everything else. But if a guy doesn't like, say, vagina, he's not. He's not, like, vagina-phobic or anything. Like, what he's supposed to naturally be attracted to. 
Really? That's, I guess that needs to be a new thing, you know? Are you vagina phobic? Uh, no, but I don't. Honestly, like, I don't I like mean, plastic ones. Does that count? <laughs> not you, you. <laughs> I know you aren't. But I mean, honestly, I mean, so we're we're supposed to just love quote unquote women that have penises, and if we don't, we're the problem. Last I checked, I was biologically born a man, and my entire drive in life is to procreate. You can't procreate with somebody that has a dick. Well, Sorry. you can't, well, I mean, that's, well, I mean, you know, not, not to put too fine a point on it, but there was... Now, now, this is where it gets really confusing, because let's not forget, about two to three weeks ago, there was a news story about a transgendered couple. Now, bear in mind, this was a man that became a woman, and a woman that became a man, who then married each other, and had a baby together. <laughs> well, yeah, because one had the right parts, and the other one had the right parts. So, the man with the vagina had the baby that was produced by the woman that had a penis. Well, yeah, no, the no, end. Yeah, I don't no, give a damn. But no, there, there, there was a reason I brought this up. Because not only is there that weird sub-layer of this whole thing, but let this sink in for a second. They each had reassignment surgery to marry each other. But I, I, I'm, I'm confused by that whole thing. Because you want, you're a woman who felt felt like a man, so you had reassignment surgery, and then you married someone who was a man who felt like a woman. Couldn't you have just left things the way they were and had saved a lot of money and just you know role played in the bedroom or something? I'm just asking. Exactly. I mean, really? Hey, how about this? You're a man and you're a woman, and you love each other. Accept what each other is. They get married and have a family. Really, honestly. Do you really need to have the surgery? Do you, do, do you really need to role play? It's fucking... Um, oh, I did it. It's freaking <laughs> it role wasn't play. Me. It's role play is all it is. Do you really need that? How about you grow up and just be who you are. And if you actually love each other, the one that is a man that thinks she's a woman, and the one that's a woman that thinks she's a man, will love each other. The end. Love is love. But apparently yeah, not. But apparently not, because, you know, if you don't love a woman with a penis, then you're a homophobic prick. <laughs> Yeah, I am. <laughs> hey, hello, everybody, the world. I am a homophobe and a transophobe. Just wanted to let you know. Just just to make sure there's no confusion, the only thing in the world that I like to play with that has a joystick are my gaming consoles. <laughs> just, 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 just making sure there's we no were confusion playing there. We were playing Galaga the other night, by the way. Dude, I love that game. All right, so let's move on. I think we've about beat this topic to death. No pun intended, since we were just talking about joysticks. But uh, so there's another l little interesting thing that's happened on social media this week. There's been a hashtag floating around for a few days that everybody kind of got in on, yeah. uh, making fun of HuffPo. <laughs> what a bunch of morons! I, I yes, yeah, we're gonna go, and we're gonna. Really find out what America's all about. Are you? I really, I really, really, really hope there's cameras. I hope there's video. I really want to see Huppo reporters 
out in the flyover states. Dude. I really do. Oh, God. They, they, could, they could literally make a fortune. Honestly, one of us should contact them and be like, hey, look, we will put a KLRN crew with you. We'll we'll take care of everything. We'll we'll put it on YouTube for you. We'll do hey, I got a bunch of vacation time. I got a bunch of vacation time. I'll take it. Just say it, dude. We we should literally hit them up and be like, look, if you're really gonna do this, we have like a crew we will send with you, we will videotape, it'll be great. We'll put it on YouTube, we'll split the revenue. Because you know the first thing that's gonna happen the first time they walk into somewhere in flyover country and they don't have valet parking. What a bunch of savages. The restaurant doesn't even have valet parking. Hey, psst. you can't get a soy latte here. It's, I mean, one of the funniest things I saw on social media over this whole hashtag was, oh my God, the coffee actually is coffee. <laughs> I don't know. One of my favorite ones I saw was the one where it was like I asked them where the gender neutral bathroom was, and they pointed across the street to a porta potty at a construction site. <laughs> I mean, really, honestly, these people are going to leave New York City and go to the Midwest and try to figure out. They're trying to. They're, they're trying to, the whole thing is, try to figure out how the whole country thinks. Really? You, you're a, I almost did it again. You're a freaking journalist. And you're trying to figure out how your country thinks? Uh, journalist? HuffPo. No. <laughs> They they like to, they like to think they're journalists, but come on, let's get real. That's like calling. Okay, that's I, like, I that, did that. I did that with air quotes. That's, okay, that, that's like calling the Hoff an actor. Come on now. It's that was maybe one of the best hashtags I've seen in a couple of years. It was definitely it was. fun. I was kind of sad I got in on it towards the end because we were busy at work, and I looked up, and I'm like, what is all this that's going off on my phone? And I started looking, and the first one I noticed was from Mo, and she's like, I'll have the chicken fried steak because I don't eat beef, uh, or I don't eat red meat. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, that, that really does sound like somebody from New York because the funny thing is because I have had friends that have come over from, like, New York or even, like, places like Delaware, and they're like, holy crap, you guys fry everything out here. No wonder you weigh 500 pounds. I'm like, shut up. And then they eat it, and they're like, no wonder you fry everything. Yeah, because it's tasty. I mean, I mean, I the, the one I started with, the first one I did was, oh, my God, they really actually do grow corn and wheat on farms. These people, they, they literally think that everything's made in factories. They're, they're going to farmland. They're going to actually see, you know, farms. They're going to actually see how their food gets produced. They're they're so out of touch. We need to take a trip to see how things work in our own country. Really? Well, to be fair, they don't. Really... I said I said something. I, I said something to our buddy Rick Cannon, and his his girlfriend has a horse. And when she he posted a picture of her horse on on. Facebook, and he said, look, I got a new doggy. <laughs> so I posted a picture of a bunch of horses, and I tagged him in on it, on that hashtag, and I said, why would anybody want so many big dogs? Oh, that's funny. Oh. But to be fair, they don't really, I mean, cons but they don't really consider flyover country part of America, just, just so you know. They don't. They don't. They're trying to see what got Trump elected. That's what they're trying to do. 
what got Trump elected was a bunch of angry people who got tired of feeling like nobody in Washington listened to them, and sadly, they still haven't figured that out. Exactly. I really think this whole um, Huppo visits the Midwest is going to backfire on them big time. I think it already has, but... Well, it'll give Saturday Night Live material for about 20 years. <laughs> eh, I'm not, not done with not them, that, too. Not that they would use it, but it would. But speaking of Saturday Night Live type stuff, since we are kind of running out of time, I actually, or starting to anyway, I actually got caught up on uh, most of America's Got Talent because I hadn't really been watching it. There was, there was in like, I think it was the very first episode, there was a guy that was dressed up like Donald Trump, and I swear his impression reminded me, I, I guess he had been watching all of the Alec Baldwin Saturday Night Live stuff because his impression was on, it, his impression was basically of Alec Baldwin doing Donald Trump, but it was still friggin' hilarious because everybody hated him at first because he came out dressed like Donald Trump, and then all of a sudden this old 70-year, this guy that looks like he's probably in his 60s, uh, dressed in the Donald Trump suit with the orange wig, doing a fairly decent impression of him, starts busting out dance moves like MC Hammer, and all of a sudden everybody eats it up, and I'm like, eh... But it was just interesting to watch the, the dynamic of the crowd change because anytime he started doing the Trump impression, they were all like, boo! And then he actually did what he came out there to do, and they all loved it. Even Simon voted him through, which I was kind of surprised to see. But the, uh, an interesting little segue to that part, uh, or for that bit, because we were talking about showbiz. Guess who's talking about running for, what is it, senator? Out of uh, Michigan? Yeah. Oh. Did Rock? Yeah, so I wanted to get I wanted to get your take on that because I, I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. I've I've seen a lot of the more shallow conservatives are like, "Oh, it's great because it's going to make liberals' heads explode." And I'm just sitting back going, "I really kind of want to know what he thinks he's going to accomplish before I figure out whether or not I'm going to get excited, especially since I can't vote for him anyway." Uh, the only person that I know in that yeah. general area has actually made a comment about digging a bunker should this happen. <laughs> I, 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 you know, hey, if you want to run for senator, run for senator. But if you have no freaking clue what you're doing, I, I mean, I see all of these celebrities now. Antonio Sabata Jr. and all the and, and the Rock, all saying they're going to run. They're going to do this. You know what? No, I don't. I don't want to bring my own politics into this completely, but I don't live in Missouri, but I am supporting Austin Peterson in his Senate run in Missouri because that's the kind of person I want in there. Do I want Kid Rock in there? Do I want Kid Rock? quote, unquote, representing me as a, I don't even know what to call myself anymore, a conservative, I guess. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't want, I don't want celebrities running for Congress, for Senate, for president. I really don't. I didn't, I didn't this time around with president. He got it. A celebrity got it. Great. Awesome. That happened. I'm, I, I, I don't need this trend. I don't want this trend. I want this trend to go away. I just want it to go away. Hey, maybe Kid Rock would be great. But he's running on his celebrity. He's not running on any kind of platform. I don't want it. And that's that's what we don't. I want need. people like Austin Peterson. I mean, you know, people are giving him hell for running running as a Republican. Heh. I don't care. Whoever takes to get him in there, I'm 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 supporting the man. I'm not supporting the the freaking letter next to his name. That's not what I'm supporting. 
I'm supporting the person. You know, I said it to a guy tonight. I said, he said, oh, yeah, well, he's just running as a Republican. He's crossing lines. Well, Rand Paul's been doing it. Does everybody really think Rand Paul's a Republican? Probably, to be honest. Do they really think that? He's not a Republican. He's a libertarian that's pretty much more just an independent now because he doesn't like the way the Libertarian Party's gone either, which is the same thing with Austin Peterson. That's the kind of people I like to see running. I, I, keep your celebrity. Take your celebrity and just go away. I don't want it on the left. I don't want it on the right. Take it and go away. Don't run on your celebrity. All right. Well, we are just about out of time. Um, actually, we are about two minutes away from being out of time. Um, but I wanted to get one last uh, bit from the hashtag in because this one was actually done by a friend of ours. It was funny because um, it's actually he does a show on uh, KLRN with us, uh, the Hardcore Patriot. He put out a tweet that I thought was pretty funny on that hashtag yesterday. He's like, we walked into a local subway station, ordered food, and then the uh, the attendant seemed confused when we asked them for departure times. And I guess it was referring to a subway restaurant, though, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> oh, I missed that. And as it had usual, to be Al. Yeah, it was. And as usual, at the end of the show, Spreaker has decided to freeze. So yay for us. All right, so why don't you remind folks where it is that they can hang out with you when you are not on the radio hanging out with me. You can hang out with me on Twitter at Mad Feist, F-E-I-S-T. Um, and you can hang out with me on Facebook at Daniel Wright and my professional page, which I have been ignoring. Shame on me. Um, which is... Dan Wright. Does that make you a professional so, procrastinator? Huh? If you're ignoring your professional page, does that make you a professional procrastinator? Yes, it does. I'm a professional procrastinator with a dog barking. Can you hear her? Oh, yeah, we can hear <laughs> All right, well, since everything's frozen, we're going to get creative on the way out. But I am, of course, Rick Robinson. You can follow along with me on Twitter at AOTR underscore host, or you can shoot me an email at rick at klrnradio.com. On that note, folks, we are out for the night. Pardon the impromptu strange bumper, but it's really all I can put together to give us an outro. So we'll be back next week. Hopefully, Spreaker will figure out what they're doing that's making things freeze every five seconds between then and now, because it seems like it happens about every other night. On that note, we're out, folks. Take care. God bless. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. <laughs> I've been here for seven years.